Hello there, I'm Joseph. And I'm Mariana. This is our little baby Chloe. And today we are in the gorgeous village of Al Qaeda, which is on the Serra de Gardunia mountain, just outside of Fundao. If you click the link up here, you'll uh, see a village tour of this village that we done uh, a few months back. It's a lovely place. It's got cafes and uh, bless you. It's got cafes, pharmacies, bakeries, mini markets, all of that jazz. Today we are here because we're going to be showing you a beautiful olive farm. It's uh, a hilltop farm. It's right on the uh, the crest of a hill. Really, really gorgeous place. And uh, yeah, before we show you that, I would like to ask if you can please click that subscribe button. It's going to mean that you get to see all of the farms that we advertise every week, and of course, it's going to really help us and uh, and our channel out as well. So yeah. Let's go take a look around that farm. Okay, we've just pulled up at the farm and uh, you would have just seen the uh, the lovely drive in from this uh, excellent excellent access track that comes in. Uh, we are just a stone's throw from the uh, from the from the village where we just were a moment ago, Al Qaed. We're going to uh, to return there in a little while and show you uh, show you some more of the village. Uh, it's around two kilometers from the village, so a very very short distance indeed. You've got this cracking view here to the uh, to the Serra d'Estrella, just behind that just behind that little oak tree there. Yeah, the uh, the Serra d'Estrella mountain, the highest mountain on mainland Portugal, stands at 1,993 meters altitude. Fantastic. This is the uh, the entrance here to the farm. This is the boundary, so you could pop a lovely gate on there, and that would look very, very nice indeed. You'll see why I call this farm Hilltop, uh, because we are straddled right on the uh, the crest of the uh, of the top of the hill here. So panoramic views all around. Doesn't matter which direction you look at. Hey Chloe, <laughs> this farm is a, a beautiful, beautiful farm indeed. Uh, three hectares. It's got uh, some few hundred olive trees. It's predominantly an olive farm. But as you can see, there's the odd uh, cherry tree. There's one here. I can see some more cherries down there. Another one here. They're just coming out of blossom now. Actually, quite a few cherries as you look around. But yeah, predominantly olive trees. Um, it is a very, very nice farm indeed. It's been uh, really taken care of. Very, uh, very, very nice. But um, yeah, I've had the uh, the paperwork checked for this farm. It doesn't currently have a house on it. It does have, over here, an agricultural support building, uh, which is basically just a, a shed type uh, style building. So a barn or something like that, where you can store your tools and all of that sort of thing. What, uh, what this farm does have, however, is the ability to build a house on it. Um, so here on the top of the hill, uh, you wouldn't find many farms like that because they would be in what's classed uh, an e as an ecological reserve, so somewhere where you're not allowed to build. But this farm you can, you can build, um, and I believe it's to 120 square meter footprint. That can be on two floors as well, so that's a 240 square meter usable area. So that's um, a really, really nice sized house. It's actually rather large. You probably wouldn't want it that large you'd probably want it smaller but you can go that large if you'd like to and this would probably be the place to uh, to site the house because if I walk over here you'll see the views are just to die for all right Chloe <laughs> picking flowers <laughs> bless her heart so yeah here here would be the place to site the house on the terrace we just were or just here because you've got those views there looking towards the north this way is north the Serra de Estrella is north the uh, the Serra de Cardinia over here behind me is to the south and yeah you would have such a vantage point here you would just be able to see all the way around the house it would be absolutely beautiful but yeah let's take a little look around the farm and see what we've uh, see what we've got we'll see what we've got here on this uh, this first terrace as you come in of course numerous numerous olive trees and then uh, we go down into the farm cherry trees on the right hand side here cherry trees do fantastic here 
the reason for that is cherries cherries do fantastic in the whole area here but they uh, they really like a, a bit of a chill in the winter it makes them nice and strong for the next the next uh, the next year coming and uh, yeah they have the uh, the snow-capped mountains here so as the wind comes this way uh, the cherries get nice and strong and that's why Fundal is uh, is uh, prized for its cherries here because of that Ceredostrella and the uh, the cool winds the farm has lots of lovely terraces all um, all um, um, supported here by these lovely lovely stone walls nice big mature olive trees there's a mixture of olive trees on this land so you've got um, Gallega and Quarter de Ville uh, there's a couple, a couple of the varieties. So you've got some eating olives and oil olives as well. So fantastic. The, uh, I'm going to put a, a drone shot on the screen here so you can see the, uh, the perimeter of the farm. It's a really nice shape, not convoluted or anything like that. Very nice indeed. And yeah, it goes all the way up over there to where those pine trees are. My friend actually keeps uh, some beehives in those pine trees. And then here is the, um, it's the agricultural support building. So this is just a, um, like I said, a, a tool shed or something like that. Handy thing to have on the farm. You could, of course, um, keep uh, keep some chickens or something like that in there. But it probably you would want to keep it as a tool shed in actual fact. That would be really nice. Oops, did you just fall over? Did you just trip? <laughs> Too many flowers to pick. That's the problem. Too many flowers. <laughs> Are you coming, Chloe? <laughs> Leave some flowers. <laughs> Bless you. As we walk this way, you'll see obviously lots and lots of olive trees. And yeah, like I said, the boundary runs from those those tall trees over there all the way to those tall trees over there. The farm is three hectares, which means thirty thousand square meters. Um, that's uh, that's a rather large farm. It means uh, an awful lot of olive oil, I'm sure. And wow. Look at these terraces, absolutely gorgeous. Very, very dreamy, very nice. Are you coming, Chloe? Come on. <laughs> Bless her heart. Yeah, this is a um, very nice area here as well. Um, lots of these uh, lots of these pastures could be all fenced off. That's what I would do. I'm just talking about what I would do, of course. And uh, yeah, run um, a nice wooden wooden fence down here with some woven wire on it, perhaps, and uh, keep, a few, um, keep a few sheep, some goats, I don't know. A couple of donkeys. What do you reckon to that, Mariana? Donkeys. Donkeys, fantastic. We like donkeys. <laughs> there's actually a subsidy for the uh, Mirandes donkey, uh, Portuguese donkey. Uh, of course, there's numerous other subsidies as well. This farm, for example, would get a, uh, a land subsidy uh, because of all the olive trees and all of the uh, the arable land and everything. Chloe's, Chloe's well back there. Come on, Chloe. Let's go. There's lots more flowers down this way. <laughs> Bless her heart. And um, yeah, of course you would get subsidies for sheep and goats and things like that. Um, yeah, so that would be um, that'd be nice to have as well. But yeah, no. As I was saying, what I would do is I would fence off some of these uh, some of these pastures. Have a fence going that way. Fence round here, and then um, rotationally graze. So you can run your um, you could drive your sheep down here with a, with a nice uh, a cane and a couple of people, and then move them one pasture to the next. That's what we do on our farm. We at the moment have about, how many sheep do we have at the minute, Mariana? 20 something? Yeah, we have a couple of lambs. But what, what, what have we got? 24 sheep, something like that? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, and what we actually do have at the moment is a few lambs um, ready to go. They've been weaned from their mother and um, yeah, we need to get rid of them. We haven't got, um, haven't got enough uh, grass on the farm to keep every lamb that we breed. Yeah. So um, if anybody is interested in lambs and lives in the area here, please do give us a, give us a shout on Facebook or uh, Instagram or send us an email or something like that and we can, uh, we can provide, your, uh, provide your sheep for you. <laughs> but yeah, no, these, um, these pastures would be absolutely fantastic for a few sheep. I did say goat, but to be honest with the amount of trees that you've got on this farm, you, um, you wouldn't necessarily want to, uh, to keep too many goats because they would, um, they would certainly nibble at the trees and stuff. Sheep would. But um, on your olive trees, they wouldn't. There's uh, there's enough height here. There's enough height here where the uh, where the sheep would graze underneath, and they wouldn't uh, wouldn't upset the um, upset the trees too much. I think you better go back and check Chloe because she's um, <laughs> she's picking uh, a million and one flowers. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, this track goes right the way through the farm, passes all of the beautiful terraces, and I have to keep stopping and turning to show you these terraces with all the for the all of the uh, the lovely shisto stone walls. Have a look at this. But yeah, these pastures, they would be absolutely fantastic for livestock. 
um, that would be uh, certainly what I would do. Look at these stone walls, gorgeous on the mountainside here. Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, I would uh, definitely keep a few, keep a few sheep on here. That would be nice. You can see there's not really any neighbours around here, so you're um, you're nice and secluded. The uh, the closest neighbour is probably at a guess around one kilometre away. So yeah, certainly close enough and far away enough, I would say. And yeah, lovely, lovely place indeed. All these little walls, I keep saying it, but they're gorgeous. That one there has just been repaired probably a couple of years back. There's not really any moss growth or anything like that on there. Come on, Chloe. <laughs> Bless the heart. If you are interested in this farm, oh, it would help if I said the price, wouldn't it? The price is 65,000 euros, which are for three hectares, and the ability to build a uh, 240 square meter usable area house. I think that is a very nice price indeed, especially considering everything that's on this land. Um, yeah, if you're interested, please do send me an email, farmerforfun at outlook.com. Of course, you can check our website as well, www.farmerforfun.com. And that will um, that will show you all of the, uh, the the list of the current properties that we have available. We're about to be uploading uh, quite a few more properties because um, yeah, when I was in uh, in bed ill with my back recently, I was uh, unable to get out and take pictures of all of the new properties I've been told about. But yeah, now I'll uh, now I'm back in action. I'm going to be uh, going to be uh, uploading them soon. Hey, young lady. Oops, oopsie daisy. Help you get. <laughs> look at this sorry Chloe if I can step over you look at this um, cherry tree over here my word I don't think I've ever seen one so big it's huge um, cherry trees they can produce uh, the dwarf dwarf cherry trees when they're pruned to dwarf height they'll produce like 40 50 kilos per tree something like that off the, off the top of my head these ones when they're when they're allowed to, to grow so so grand and look at the size of that compared to my hand well wow. <laughs> when they're allowed to, to grow this size they can easily produce three four hundred kilos of fruit um, of course that's not every year it depends if it's a, a good year or not but yeah that gives you some sort of idea of the uh, the uh, the amount of kilos you can get from the cherries well wow. that is a that's an amazing tree I really don't think I've ever seen one so big absolutely beautiful but yeah talking about these subsidies i was saying subsidies a moment ago uh, people often ask me oh give a give an exact figure on the subsidies well it's not quite that easy because every farm has many variables it's not quite that easy to say you'll get this amount or you'll get that amount and it very much uh, very much depends on what you're what you're growing what livestock you're raising everything like that but you get subsidies for the cork trees Subsidies for land, subsidies for, uh, of course, all your different production, subsidies for different types of livestock, all of that sort of thing. So, yeah, but you're certainly talking, uh, on this farm, you're talking a fair old, fair old bit of money, which is nice, goes into the, uh, goes into the pot to helping towards um, running the farm and whatnot. Lots of young, lots of young olive trees down here. Absolutely gorgeous. Some more cherry trees, big ones as well. Really big ones. These ones are pruned to dwarf height, like I was saying a moment ago. And these ones, of course, are let to go very mature. Yeah, this is a, uh, a lovely farm and it really has got a lot to offer. As we come up here, this is the far limit. And it leads back out onto a public track. So now we've left the farm. This is the, uh, the border. And here is another public track. And that just feeds a couple of different farms up that way. And of course, a couple down that way as well. You can see a few of the uh, few of the neighbours in the distance there. Right on the corner here, you'd pop a a nice big gateway here, wouldn't you? But um, right here, you can see there's some lovely strawberry fruit trees, madroñeras. So they uh, they're very nice indeed. I was looking to see if there's some berries this time of year. You should start to see them. There they are. They'll go uh, a lovely red colour. You can see they've got quite a um, Quite a, uh, a rough, rough surface there with all the uh, all the little seeds on them. Sorry, Chloe, I've made you walk all this way. We're going back again. <laughs> Bless her heart. But yeah, so you can see there really is um, there really is a lot of terrain on this farm up here. That's um, a dream farm, really. I would say. Don't know if you agree. If you agree, please, uh, or if you don't agree, <laughs> please write in the comments. Let me know. If I come up this way, you'll see. There's quite a few. You don't have to follow. You can stay there if you like. I'll show you um, show you this little little cherry orchard. You should start to see. Should start to see the cherries coming through now. Where am I looking? 
not quite on this variety, not quite. You can just about see they're forming. Just about see they're forming. Just underneath the blossom there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, a lovely, lovely time of year here in central Portugal. All the fruit is starting to pop. Give it another month and a half and we'll all be out. I've got a cherry farm, so we'll all be out on the farm. Here you go, here's some cherries. Oh no, my eyes, my eyes deceived me. I thought I saw some young little cherries on there. <laughs> we'll all be out on the farm picking those, picking those beautiful cherries. So yeah, lovely little little orchard here. And all the um, all the terraces, they each have um, a little little track that is suitable for a tractor to come in, cut the grass and whatnot. Lovely. I'm not sure if we can get out the other end here. Let's take a look. It's springtime, so all the grasses are growing. Grasses are all nice and tall. This farm here has been treated really well. You can see there's been no, no chemicals or anything used on here, so it's all been um, cut, and that's obviously it hasn't been cut yet. But, um, but yeah, every year this gets cut. It doesn't get sprayed, so that's nice. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. I'm probably ever so boring, aren't I? Just walking around looking at trees. <laughs> All these little walls, absolutely splendid. You would need to install a borehole here. You could also get um, electricity from the mains connected. It's not that far away. It's only a couple of hundred meters. So that's, um, that's good. I thought we could get up to the next terrace here, but we can't. I could if my back wasn't bad, so I'm going to have to just go around. But um, yeah, you'd have to get a borehole, a borehole installed. The rough price for that, the cheapest price you can get would be about 40 euros per meter into the ground. And you'd probably need around 40, 50, maybe 60 meters, something like that. The good thing about, about the, uh, the boreholes is if they don't find water, you don't pay. Make sure you clarify that with the company before, before you start digging. And yeah, here you can see that sheeshed wall which has been repaired. Lovely, absolutely lovely. <laughs> I do like the old stone walls, gorgeous. And yeah, I think we've pretty much seen everything here. I'm going to put a couple of drone shots on the screen here to show you the, uh, the upper terraces of the farm and the overhead shots of the, um, of the olive trees and everything. And then I think, I don't know if Mariana can hear me, and then I think we head to Al Qaeda, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go have a drink. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Please do email, like I said, farmerforfun at outlook.com. And if we can help with anything, we surely will. And yeah, check our website. <laughs> I can hear Chloe going, pie pie. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so please do check our website, www.farmerforfun.com. And yeah, let's head to Al Qaeda and have a drink. just got here back to uh, back to Alkai village and yeah a really really lovely place um, I said that we done a video on the uh, on the village tour that we done that was a few months back and uh, again we actually done another video here that I just remembered um, it was the mushroom festival they have a festival here every year in October called um, Mishkorosh which is um, yeah a really really lovely lovely festival indeed the the streets here are absolutely packed you get like 30,000, 20,000, 30,000, maybe 40,000 people per per uh, weekend come because it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event, a three day long event. So yeah, the streets here are absolutely packed. This this part here, this is normally a uh, outdoor cooking arena. <laughs> and yeah, really, really nice indeed. Yeah, coffee, Marian? Yeah. Go for a coffee. Oh, Mia. What's it all? Galau para mim, Mariana? Pode ser um galão para mim. Os galões, então. Yeah, click, click, the, uh, click the link in the top corner to uh, to see our video what we done on the uh, on the uh, the mushroom festival. Here they got the uh, the posters of um, all the types of mushrooms that are in the uh, in the Fundau district. 
and they say which is handy, the ones that you can and the ones that you cannot eat. <laughs> Mishkorosh, where am I looking? The name of the festival, it's named after... Oh, my eyes are no good. I can't see. I'm not sure. One of these. Got saffron milk caps here. Frad. Um, parasol mushrooms. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I can't see which one it is. Yeah, I can't see. It's one of them anyway. Mishkorosh. Oh, that one, I believe. I think it's that one. Got the coffees. <laughs> Pickle